So tonight we're going to talk about methods to level and uh, flatten the ceiling. And in order to do that, you need a, a level uh, reference line. So say you're remodeling an old home, you've stripped the ceiling down to the rafters, either the top rafters or the floor above, and you're trying to lay in a new ceiling and you want it flat and level. In order to do that, you need a level line. There's around the whole perimeter of the room. There's many ways of doing it. One way would be to start somewhere in the middle of the, uh, or a corner, make a mark, take your four foot level, level it out, draw your line across the studs, and transfer all the way around the room. If you were to do that, by the time you get back to this corner, you're probably going to be off a little bit. All right? um, another method that's commonly used is to use a line level. It's a mason line. You can get a little drop level that hooks right on here. They're usually only about two inches wide. You string it across the wall. You mark one end. You adjust the other side till that thing reads level. And those are your those are your corners. And I'll show you another way that's uh, quicker and can be more accurate. So this is a cross line level from Bosch. It's a model GLL 2-10. It's a refurb unit that I got from uh, CPO Outlets online for like $57. The nice thing about this is I can just lay it on the counter, I can turn it on, and it self levels. So the counter doesn't have to be level, but it gives me a cross line. It gives me a level line this way and a plumb line this way. So as you can see, I can mark it here, I can go to the other end, and I can mark it and I get my level line. Nice thing about this unit, the other nice thing is it has a quarter 20 bolt on the end and it will uh, adapt to a standard camera tripod. So this is a, a standard camera tripod you may have in your, in your house already in possession or you can get them fairly inexpensive for as little as like $30 or whatever or even less on sale. So here you can see um, I have that tape right here as my reference. I put a little Tape. I was doing this and I wasn't worried about the wall, I might put a pencil mark there, say that's my corner. I want to traverse over here, I can just swivel the whole unit on the tripod and I move my reference line. And if I center this in the, in the room, I can cover all four corners. So now I have a nice reference line that tells me a level point all around the room in all four corners. Now this, the rafters might be uh, sagging, they might be different height, they're guaranteed to not be level. So what you do in your corners then is you want to find the lowest corner and you're going to set your strapping to that, to that point. So once you have your reference line in your, in your corners, you can use a tape measure, you measure up to the ceiling and the shortest dimension is your lowest corner point. It may not be the lowest point in the whole ceiling, but it is your lowest corner point. And that's where you're going to start um, leveling everything out. And with that, I'll end this part of the, the recording, and we'll move on into the garage and show uh, a method to level uh, the whole ceiling. Okay. Okay, we've moved into the garage now uh, with my mock ceiling here, uh, not the scale, obviously. But these uh, two by fours running this way represent my floor rafters. Okay, and normally they would be 16 on center. These are like two feet. Um, and what I want to do is I want to put some furring strips, one by three furring strips, across those roof, uh, the floor joists uh, on the ceiling above you. And I want this whole furring strips to be level and flat. So I already got my reference lines on the wall, say up here, my local level reference, and I've determined that this is my low point in my uh, four corners. Okay, so I'm going to start here. And what I'll do is I'll take a furring strip and I'll fasten it in this corner. Now, I didn't fasten it in this corner for this demonstration, but that's fine. You would start here and you would fasten it all the way down to the, the, uh, the joist. Because this is the low spot, to make it level, I should have a gap on all my other locations. So I start in my, in my low spot um, and I'm going to run my furring strips across all my joists. Now I want these to be level, okay? So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use a string and, and some uh, blocks, spacing blocks. So over here I have mason line. It's 
It's a regular, probably, I don't know, eighth inch mason line or whatever. You can get it anywhere, Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. Um, it's a nylon line. It's very strong and it'll stretch. So I have here a, uh, an attachment block that I'm going to fix to my spot right here. And all I've done is I've wrapped the mason line around here. If you, have a, if you know how to tie a clove hitch, you can do that. Or you can just wrap it and, and wrap it over itself. Basically, you want this line to leave the top of this block flat. So when I fasten it down in this corner, which I'll do right now. I already pre-drilled this, so it should be easy. Now it's nice and tight, and it's leaving this block, and it's firmly fixed to the furring strip. Now I'm going to pull it down the length. Now in the real room, this would be you know many feet long, 10 feet long, however the length, of, whatever the length of the room is. And I want to get this nice and tight, so that I can use in the same spacing here, so that I can use this level block. Now if I go all the way to the other end, I have to make up the spacing on this side to make it level over here. So based on my level line, I know, let's say I know this is a quarter inch higher than that one over there. I would, underneath the furring strip, I would put that quarter inch gap, and then I would fasten this end of the furring strip all the way down to, to, the, uh, to the joist. So now they both have the same level place. If I can't fit it on a single strip, furring strip, if the room is too long, just cut a small block of furring strip and use that as a spacer, okay? But you fasten it down with whatever space you need underneath to make it level with this corner here. That will make it level. And what you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to create a, a line that's, that's nice and tight. And the way you do that is you wrap it around another a, a securing block and you're going to pull. So you want to... Now this is a very short line, so I don't need to pull that much. But if it's a longer room, you want it nice and tight, so you'll be pulling more. Right? You pull it, and then you secure that. I need this guy. Okay. Now that's super tight. And this is now my reference. It's level, because I spaced this one the right amount. This is my, my uh, low spot, and I can use a block of the same material. I use plywood here, you can use one by, you can use whatever. But you want nice sharp edges, and whatever material you, you have, that's the same space. So as I move to my next floor joist, I use this as a gauge. If, if the block looks like this, it's above the line, I need to sink it down more. Most of them will require a space. They should if this is the low spot. So it'll actually be below, and you'll have to shim underneath. You'll have to put some kind of a, a shim to lift that up so that line looks just like that. You do that. You secure two screws. You move on to the next one. Since this furring strip is going to actually hold the whole ceiling, I actually recommend two screws on opposite sides to actually make this nice and rigid across each of your, each of your floor joists. Um, the end you should be careful is you're very likely to split, so you may actually want to pre-drill those, but you don't have to. Right? Um, once you're done with one strip the whole length of the room, you move your block over, you do the same thing. You can transfer this level line to the next 16 on center, 16 inch on center for your furring strips until you cover the whole room. When you're done with that, when you've got all your long runs done, you're going to want to go back in between these 16 on center, cut another little furring strip just exactly that width, and then screw it into the very end wall so you have something to screw through all the way around the whole perimeter of the ceiling. You always put your ceilings in first, then your walls up. The walls should overlap the ceiling so they, the, that'll actually help hold them up. Um, the other thing I recommend is when you're laying in drywall on this ceiling, when you space them out, you actually can put two screws um, right next to one another, uh, probably an inch apart. That reduces the amount of weight that each screw has to hold, and it doesn't make it any harder for the mudders to cover because they cover both those screws with one swipe. 
So it does a much better job of securing the ceiling up over the long haul, especially if you've got insulation up top, pressing down on the ceiling or extra weight. The, the double screws side by side actually helps hold the ceiling up quite nicely. So this is an old time trick I learned from my dad. Find your level, find your low spot, start there. The only, the only caveat to this is sometimes these floor joists will be uh, sagging in the middle and the low spot might actually be between them. So if you know that, and you can check that a lot with line levels and there's various ways to check that, all you need to do is drop this, this corner down to the lowest point, wherever it is in the ceiling. I recommend if you're going to do many rooms, start with a small room, get the technique down, um, and uh, it's more forgiving, and then move on to your larger rooms. The larger rooms are where you're going to be able to see if the thing is not level, if the things are sagging, they're not quite right. So take the time to level your furring strips. It'll do a much better job on, uh, on ceiling, especially in an old, an old house that you're trying to repair where nothing is plumb and level. So with that, I'm going to end the video.